Uh, I'm here with Fahid, who's going to tell us all about uh, infrequent access in S3. Yeah. Uh, hi. Bit. Yeah. My name is uh, Fahad Abdi. I'm a product manager at S3, and uh, we just launched our new storage class today, One Zone Infrequent Access. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a new storage product from S3, designed specifically for infrequent access workloads. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the kind of use cases you would use for this is if you have a second site DR copy, for instance, that you want to store in a data center, um, say, geographically separated by hundreds of miles, you can choose region A and region B, and this is a really good storage class for the region B. Um, because we locate the storage in a single AZ now, instead of the traditional way of storing data in S3, which is across the three availability zones, uh, we're able to save cost, and you know, we pass back those cost savings to our customers. When you're saving this data across two geographically uh, separated regions, you don't need to have you know, the three availability zone durability um, uh, in your first region and three availability zone durability in your second region. So oftentimes customers have told us, hey, it's kind of a little bit overkill you know, having that three availability uh, <coughs> region protection, uh, protection uh, AZ uh, availability zone protection in both regions. So that's why we came up with this particular storage so, product. Can you walk me through kind of the existing set of uh, storage classes? I, I mean, you have your regular storage class that right. you just described, uh -huh. and then you have uh, what other kinds of storage classes? There's infrequent yeah. access, there's infrequent right. access single AZ. Uh, what, what other kind of storage classes are we working with now? Yeah, so we have our gold standard, which is our standard storage class at S3. Uh, <clears throat> and then three years ago, in 2015, we launched standard infrequent access. And then we also have Amazon Glacier. Now, standard infrequent access um, has certain characteristics. It's really optimized for storing your data long term, uh, but really for backups. So it's not like Glacier backups where you pay, uh, you know, whatever t you know time period you want to get the data back in. It's it's still S3 kind of latency. It's but still it's, S3. It's yes. not meant for you know frequent access or frequent updates or. That's correct. So so the advantages of standard infrequent access are that you get a millisecond response time for getting your data back from S3 versus Glacier, which is more of an archival storage. Uh, so with Glacier, for instance, it could take minutes uh, to hours, uh, and the access patterns are more asynchronous. Uh, so your applications need to understand that you know, when I'm trying to get my data, the request coming back for the data is going to take several minutes from Glacier, whereas S3, you make a request and the data comes right back. So what is the cost like in infrequent access, single AZ? Uh, I, I understand it's probably lower mm -hmm. considering yes. it's less replicated and right. less of, so, so what, yeah. is, what does the cost work out to be? Sure, uh, so, uh, so what we did is we took the same replication technology that we have in standard today. We optimized it a little bit so that we can achieve the same durability level in a single availability zone and achieve a 20% cost reduction. Nice. So yeah. passing that on to the customers. That's right, we just pass that cost savings right back to the customer. I like that customer obsession. That's right. Uh, so the other kind of thing that I think is really important to highlight is mm -hmm. the durability uh, right. is not affected by this. So you're still guaranteeing the same number of nines of durability that you have in regular S3, right? That's correct. We use the same replication technology that we have in standard and standard frequent access and, and even Glacier, which gives you 11 nines of durability. We use that technology, modified a little bit, you know, just to get to that 20% right. cost reduction in a single availability zone. <clears throat> the difference really is when you're uh, with standard, standard frequent access and Glacier, you have this automatic DR protection. You have the three availability zones separated by miles. When anything happens to one availability zone, the other two still have your data, and your data remains durable. So in the event of you know, an AZ outage, which uh, has right. happened like, in the history of AWS, not for more than like I, I've ever been able, like I've been paged uh -huh. before in yeah. the past when it's happened, <laughs> uh, when I was a customer, uh, and by the time I got to my computer, it was like already resolved. Right. So it's like you're, you're not paying any cost in terms of durability for choosing this option. You're only paying right. a cost in terms of availability in the event that one AZ becomes uh, uh, inaccessible. 
That's correct. And do you get to choose which AZ you, you put your objects in, or is it just at the discretion of the service? Yeah, it's at the discretion of F S3 service. Um, we choose the AZ that uh, best allows us to get to you know, the lowest cost possible that we want to pass back to our customers. So, so it's kind of advantageous for our customers who really want, uh, <clears throat> you know, who, who are trying to save money by going to a lower cost product to let us do all the cost optimization in the background, and we can do that best when we are able to choose the availability zone. Especially if it's kind of that second region copy that you were talking about, where right. you have things you know, already in, let's say, US standard region for your storage, mm -hmm. and then maybe you want to have like a second backup in Europe or APAC or something like that. Right, exactly. Way cool. That's that's a, that's a really powerful feature for customers. I'm excited to see how they use it. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, it's, uh, we're super excited. Our customers are uh, you know, constantly telling us how they love how S3 innovates, and we like listening to our customers. We like listening to what they, what they want and coming up with new products and features for I, them. I absolutely love S3 Select, by the way. I, <laughs> I, I know we're talking about that a little bit later. I know, that's going to come I, up next. I, I'm obsessed <laughs> with it. I've been playing around with it for months. and uh, With this infrequent access storage class, um, it, it, what's the right way to refer to this? Is it infrequent access, single AZ? That's kind of a mouthful, is there? It's one zone infrequent access. Uh, we shorten it to ZIA. ZIA, um, okay, cool. Right. That's good to know. Yeah. So with the ZIA kind of storage class, what um, what kind of you know use cases have customers been presenting to you where mm -hmm. this is something that w we decided to build? Yeah, so when we, uh, you know, we launched standard infrequent access three years ago, and that was a good general purpose kind of solution for anything cheaper uh, for backups and infrequently accessed data. After we came up with that storage product, customers came back to us and said, hey, you know, this is awesome, you know, we love that you innovated on our behalf, but even within that backup use case, even standard infrequent access was a little bit, uh, you know, had too much resiliency to it, because we were replicating data across these three availability zones, and oftentimes customers had data that was reproducible. So for instance, you have your primary set of data and you create a backup snapshot, and then a month later you create another backup snapshot, and just have these culmination of backups and backups and backups. They do not need to have uh, you know, the three AZ protection for every single backup. So those are the kind of cases where you know the primary data set is somewhere else. I can, I'm just going to create a backup, or the data is recreatable because I have a primary set somewhere else. Transcoded video images is another example of that. Right. Uh, customers who are doing big data analytics create their result sets, and then those result sets they archive, they can always recreate the result so by running that big data, data yeah. uh, analytics job again, but they'd like to keep this you know, uh, saved in a lower cost Here. storage product. And yeah. with this, uh, do, do things like S3 Select still work with the storage class? Absolutely, you get all the features of S3 with the storage. It's, That's it's, what I like to hear. Yeah, it's super <laughs> easy. If you want to use this product, you just go, uh, you know, standard ways to get into a storage class. If, if you're familiar with S3, you can put into it, you can life cycle into it, you can use our CRR policies to copy your data and choose one zone infrequent access as a destination storage class. Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything that you want customers to know to get started with this or to start taking advantage of it? Uh, are, are there any kind of uh, you know, references that we have yet? I know it launched today, so it's unlikely yeah, we yeah. have. <laughs> uh, uh, so we have, uh, you know, the standard documentation is all up to date, uh, letting you know how you can access uh, the storage product. Um, you know, we have a new storage class parameter that you can uh, that you that you use to store your objects as one zone and frequent access uh, objects. So people can go in, update their lifecycle policy, say, "Hey, move this to this." Very easy. Awesome. Exactly. Right. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, uh, I think next we're going to hear from S3 Select, so I'm Perfect. excited about that. Very good. Uh, we we good job with this launch. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Yeah.